Hey folks, we're going to take a look at how I do tropical reforestation from a planning and management perspective. There are many great videos that have a guy walking around his farm showing you which permaculture techniques he uses and how he plants stuff. That's important information, but he never talks about how he got the money to pay for the farm, or how he pays his farm workers. Is the farm profitable from agriculture alone, or does it have additional touristic revenue? Did he get a $2 million inheritance from his parents? Did he have a good job and save up for many years? Or is the farm owned by a nonprofit foundation that receives donations? How does he train his workers and volunteers and manage the labor for planting new areas? Does he have a volunteer program or just paid labor? How does he calculate soil amendments or how much maintenance and labor each area of the farm will cost? These are all very important things to know when you are planning your own project and looking at the examples of others because you need to be both realistic and effective. Regarding my project, I'll give you all the basic background info you need in less than 30 seconds. I'm located in southeast Ecuador in a tropical climate with 1900 to 2100 millimeters of annual rainfall distributed rather evenly throughout the year with a four to five month dry season that's still fairly wet when it comes to dry seasons. The average temps are about 24 to 30 Celsius in the day and 70 to 20 at night and that doesn't change much throughout the year. The soil is typical rainforest geology, though we also have sandy areas by the rivers. Uh, altitude is between 760 meters and 1200 meters above sea level. Now on to the process. So how do we get money to plant fruit forests? It's an expensive process. Some people start nonprofit organizations or big companies. Our approach is a bit different and somewhat resembles crowdfunding, except the crowdfunders actually own the land. We organize group land purchases, and we raise capital from investors who are shareholders in the land. In other words, their names are on the land title as owners. So we buy a big rural piece of farmland. We specifically look for buyers who are aligned with our community vision. Each owner gets a personal homestead lot which they can develop as they please. The development of their lot is funded solely by that owner. We set aside one portion of the land as the natural reserve which remains untouched, and another portion is the community area which houses volunteers, various central resources, and acts as a hub. This area is funded by all property owners of that property. With this setup, we are able to facilitate reforestation pretty easily as the community area is already funded by the property development fund, which all landowners pay into, and landowners are eager to invest additional money to develop their personal homestead lots into fruit forests. You can see an example map on the screen where there are personal lots, a natural reserve, and then anything that is not personal or reserve is considered community area. This property is about 66 hectares or 160 acres. So when one of them approaches us to get a planting project started, what do we do? Step one, prepare a cost estimate. Given the property owner's stated preference in terms of size of area to be planted, types of trees, etc., we will develop a cost estimate. From past experience, we know in general how much it will cost to clear an area of secondary growth, plant it with trees, buy the trees and soil amendments, and plant everything. We can also figure out the maintenance cost per year. We usually provide an estimate that includes maintenance for the next one to two years. After that, they can take a look at the revenue provided by the fruit sales and decide how to continue. For example, we know the contract price around here for clearing a hectare of land will be around $1,800 in labor, depending on the type of vegetation. By the way, we aren't clearing primary forest. We are reforesting areas that have been used for decades for cow pastures and have started to regrow. Um, take a look at this spreadsheet. I use it to calculate how much to add of two very common soil amendments, limestone and Epsom salt, also known as calcium and, and magnesium. It's very common for used farmland to be deficient in these two minerals, so we add them back to the soil to make up for all the calcium and magnesium that left the soil via thousands of pounds of cow bones being raised on the site and then exported to market for years. Along with the cost estimate, we make an example grid of how these trees may fit into an area of that size. This is not what the actual planting area will look like, because once the area is cleared, we will measure contour lines and make our planting plan based on that. Once the person funding the project approves the estimate, we go on to step two. 
Step two, clearing and planning the site. I provide the workers with a printed map so they know which area to work on. They clear the brush, mostly with machete, and they also add soil amendments at this point, as well as short-term green manure cover crop seeds like cowpea and chia, and long-term ground covers like pintopina and sunshine mimosa. After it's cleared, they measure contour lines every two and a half meters across the entire area. Contour lines follow the slope and help with the erosion control. They also make it easier to maintain the area and use space way more efficiently than random planting. We had to specially train the workers to be able to do contour lines correctly. The head worker draws a map of the area after it's marked and sends it to me. I can put this map into vector graphics software and mark it where we want each tree to be planted. This map is given to the workers when it's time to plant. In addition to this map, I make a list of all trees to be planted in which rows, with additional instructions. We use an alley cropping system that alternates rows of our favorite mulch plants with rows of fruit trees. For mulch, we like to use Inga, Flamingia, and Mexican Sunflower. You may notice that we have large trees that need 8 to 10 meters of space placed only 2.5 meters away from bananas and other small trees. Why? Well, I call this succession of density. It's a waste of labor to maintain 100 square meters of land for 5 to 10 years for only one tree, when that tree is not even going to take up that amount of space until the end of that 10 year period. So for the first few years, we will plant short-term crops such as bananas in an alley crop system, which means we plant alternating rows of inga or similar mulch plants. They fruit quickly while we are waiting for the big tree to get bigger and produce fruit. Once the big tree gets big, we can chop down the bananas or let them die naturally from the increased shade. Aside from bananas, we can also use papayas or peanut butter fruit to fill this space. Step 3. Planting. Armed with a list of plants and the map, the workers plant the site according to best practices that they have been trained in. For example, we put a bit of compost and limestone at the bottom of each planting hole. Important and rare species are marked with labels. Step 4. Maintenance and follow-up. Throughout this whole process, pictures are taken of the planting and sent to the owner. Also, once the planting is done, we analyze the project finances so we can see how the money was spent and exactly how much is left for maintenance. More maintenance is needed the first year than the following years. With each plantation area, we will add notes into our schedule document to remind whoever writes the work schedule to allocate workers to that project each month. We will also add compost at about the six month point to ensure the trees are giving steady new growth. Each time the plants are maintained, Photos are taken and sent to the owner. If the owner isn't living on their lot, they will eat the fruit themselves. But if they aren't there, or they can't manage to eat all of it, they will usually elect for it to be sold. Workers harvest fruit across all the properties once or twice per week and record where it was harvested from, so the revenue is credited to the correct person. So there you have it. I think I covered just about everything in terms of how we approach reforestation from a planning and management perspective. If you have any questions, comment below. In the links below the video, you can check out the group Land Bias page on the Fruit Haven website. If you are a Homo sapiens great ape interested in a frugivorous diet and permaculture food forestry, you may want to join us as an investor.